We just reviewed a customer design that used Blocks One DDI to knit together on-prem and cloud namespaces. I thought this was a cool idea and I wanted to share it with you. The principle applies to lots of DNS servers. I'm just going to show you how to do it with Blocks One DDI because, well, InfoBlox pays the bills. In case you're asking why would anyone need to do this, maybe you have an application that spans your corporate network and the cloud and containers or VMs in each place need to communicate with the other place. It does happen. We'll configure two Blocks One DDI managed DNS servers, one on-prem and one in the cloud. And what we'd like to wind up with is both DNS servers able to resolve domain names in our company's on-prem namespace as well as in the cloud namespace. We're going to call the company's on-prem namespace company.example. You see that down at the bottom of this slide and the company's cloud namespace, company.cloud. Here's a diagram showing the on-prem DNS server in the orange circle at the middle of the slide. It's already authoritative for company.example. You can see it's a secondary doing zone transfers from another internal DNS server. So it'll already answer queries for domain names in that zone and in subzones. What we've got to do is tell it how to resolve domain names in company.cloud. There are two basic ways to do that. We can configure it as a secondary for company.cloud. That assumes, of course, that we can transfer the zone from somewhere. Or we can configure conditional forwarding to the DNS servers authoritative for company.cloud or to recursive DNS servers that can resolve company.cloud domain names for us. Why choose one over the other? Well, a secondary retrieves the whole zone via a zone transfer. That's handy because it means your on-prem DNS server doesn't need to query another DNS server to get an answer in company.cloud. And it's also good for survivability. If the DNS servers in the cloud aren't available for any reason, your on-prem DNS server still has a local copy of the company.cloud zone data. But this assumes that you can transfer the zone, and neither Route 53 nor Azure DNS will let you. Conditional forwarding, on the other hand, only requires that the DNS servers you forward to answer discrete queries, and really every DNS server does that. Here's a diagram showing the cloud DNS server in the green circle. Its configuration will be very much like the on-prem DNS servers. We'll configure it as a secondary for company.example, giving it the ability to resolve domain names in and under a company.example, and we'll configure it to forward company.cloud queries to Route 53. No offense to Microsoft or Azure DNS, I just found a Route 53 icon first. It's the one that looks kind of like a signpost, orange signpost on the far right of the slide. Okay, let's go to the Blocks One UI. I've already got it open, showing a list of on-prem hosts. On-prem hosts are what we run the Blocks One DNS servers on. Despite the name, they can be on-prem, in the cloud, or wherever. They could be run on our hardware, they can be run in a VM, or as raw containers. The top two hosts are the ones that we're interested in, cricket-aws-1, which as the name suggests will represent our AWS DNS server, and cricket on-prem-1, which will represent our on-prem DNS server. Now let's go to the DNS tab. At the top level, we see a list of DNS views. There's currently only one default, and we'll drill into that. And that brings up a list of zones. You can see that company.example already exists, and if we open up these sections after editing company.example, you can see that we have a primary DNS server configured for it, which we're calling nios.primary and which runs at the IP address 10.0.0.1. And we currently have one secondary DNS server configured for it, cricket-onprem-1. Let's configure our AWS-based DNS server as second, secondary for it. That's simple. We just use this pick list to select the correct on-prem host, cricket-aws-1, and it moves over into the selected column. We click Save and Close. We get a little message that says the secondary zone was updated successfully, and we're done. Now let's configure conditional forwarding for the company.cloud domain. This is actually forwarding for the entire domain, not just a zone, since it applies to queries for any domain name that ends in company.cloud. So we go to create, we say forward zone, because for whatever reason they call it a zone. In name, we enter company.cloud. Now it's 
wants to append company.example here, so we'll tell it not to. And in the DNS server section here, we'll choose the two DNS servers that we want to configure with this forwarding rule. One of them is cricket-aws-1, and the other is cricket-onprem-1. And if we scroll down a little farther, we see a list of forwarders. Here, we need to enter the IP addresses of the DNS servers we want to forward company.cloud queries to. In other words, our Route 53 DNS servers. Um, I actually have the Route 53 interface open, and I've drilled down to company.cloud's configuration so you can see where to find this information. Um, for example, here uh, are the four automatically assigned name servers for company.cloud. Um, Route 53 does this automatically. You don't get to choose them. Now, obviously, these are domain names, not IP addresses, so you'll have to translate these into IP addresses before entering them, but that's easy enough using a query tool like DIG. In fact, if I remember correctly, I left somewhere around here a terminal window giving me their IP addresses. So let us uh, go back to the interface. We'll click Add. We'll choose Forward to Address, and we'll put in the first IP address, which was 205.251.197.13. Click on Add again, Forward to Address, and 205.251.195.13. Click on Add again, choose Forward to Address, and 205.251.198.38. And the last one was 205.251.182.33. All right, we click Save and Close. It says our forward zone was created successfully, and now we have a forward zone for company.cloud. If we go back to the top level under default, you can see company.cloud and company.example. Now both DNS servers are configured and they can resolve domain names in both our on-premises and cloud namespaces. Simple. And adding more DNS servers that can do this is as straightforward as editing the two zones and adding more DNS servers to the list. You don't have to type in those four IP addresses again, for example. I hope you found this useful. Stay tuned for another video like this coming soon. Bye-bye.